What's going on everybody? It's your boy Kilo Loco and today we're going to be working with Flutter. So this is day 14 of hashtag 30 days of Flutter. We're going to be working with a block package again. Now last time we worked with implementing block and qubits, right? Specifically just working with the qubits portion. But we're going to take that project that we worked on in the last video and we're going to actually convert that over to a block pattern. So you can see how to upgrade um, your your qubits into blocks if you need to do that for your for your project. So we're going to just take the simple example, make a couple of minor adjustments, and then we'll be using the block pattern, which the only real difference here is that we're going to be working with events and states as opposed to functions and states. So with all that said, let's go ahead jump right on in. And as you can see, we just have our project pulled up right here. Same old app as before. We're just doing that networking request, getting those posts here, and we are able to display our data. So nothing's changed. Now, what I want to do is I want to go over to my post qubit. Now, I'm going to leave this here just so that you can reference it and you can kind of see the differences between the two. But what we are going to do is we're going to create a new class called post block. All right, so as you can see, we have our new object called post block. Now it's very similar to our qubit. We're just going to be specifying block as, a, as opposed to qubit. And another thing that you're gonna notice is that it's going to be working with not just the state, but it's going to be working with the event and the state. And each of those, ob each of those are going to be objects. It's not gonna actually be the, the individual thing that you're gonna be working with. So instead of a list of posts, we're going to have a whole entire state that's representative of that actual list of posts. So let's go ahead and start implementing both of these. They're going to be abstract ob objects, and then I'll talk a little bit more about that after we're done. All right, so as you can see, we have our post events and our post states. Now what we want to do is we want to have classes that extend each of those objects, right? Uh, so that we can have the, we can have different objects representing different events in different states. So let's think about what, what is going to be the first event that we're going to have when we open up the app. Well, we're going to be loading data. So that could be our first event. All right. So we have our load post events. Now, what are the possible states that can result in that? Well, we can have either a successfully loaded post, so we could have the loaded post state, or we could have a failed to load post state, right? Because either it can successfully succeed, or it can fail, or it could actually be loading. So let's go ahead and add those three different states. All right, so now we have our loading post state, our loaded post state, and then our failed to load post state. So whenever we trigger this event, we could only have one of these three situations going on at once, right? So now what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that we can still deal with the data that happens and that's associated with each of these events, right? So if I loaded the posts, then that means that I should have a list of posts um, with this loaded post state. If I failed to load the post, then there should have been some type of error that came back. So then what we can do is since these are classes, we can add properties like posts on this one or error on this one. All right, there we go. Now we have the associated value that comes with each of these states. So if we successfully load it, then we have our post. If we fail to load, then we should have some type of error. Now to go back down here and deal with this nasty red squiggly, right? So first, what we need to do to get rid of this red squiggly is first of all, we need to have a constructor. All right, so now we have our constructor. So whenever we deal with this post block, we're going to start off with this loading post state, right? Because we need to start off with some type of state, just like in our qubit. We also need to uh, implement the map event to state function. So what this is going to do is it's going to take in some type of event and it's our responsibility to write the functionality for what's supposed to happen after that event. So essentially, what are we supposed to do and which state is supposed to result 
as an effect of that event. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that we're going to keep following our post qubit and have an instance of our data service inside of our block, right? Because we're going to need to do that networking request. So we'll just add that in there just like we did before. So now we just have to work through the, uh, the different cases that we can deal with with our event, right? So let's go ahead and start mapping some of these things out. So what we want to do is we want to check if the event is equal to load post event, right? What do we want to return? Well, we want to return or we actually don't want to return because it's a stream. So since it's a stream, that means that we're going to be passing multiple values over time. So we're not going to actually return anything. We're going to actually yield. Yield means pass through a stream in this uh, in this use case. And we want to actually yield. And in order to use the keyword yield, we have to use async, but with a little star right there. And we have to yield that we want to return loading post state like so. But we also want to kick off our our request, right? Our data service request, so our, our get post request. So we'll yield that loading post state, but we're also going to attempt to get the data back. So then what I'll, I'll do is I'll wrap this in a try catch block. And now we have our try catch block. And then what we're going to do is we're going to await our our final post, right? So we're going to have our post and we're going to say await and we're going to say um, data service dot get posts. So now we're going to attempt to get our post. And then if we do get our posts back, then that means that we're done loading and we can return back loaded post state, right? Or if we do get that error, then we're going to we're going to yield back the failed to load post state. All right, so just like that. Oh, and I, I, I got this wrong. This, this is, is, we wanna check if it's this type, right? So now whenever we receive a load post event, we're going to set it to the loading post state. We'll then try to get our post. If we successfully get it, then we'll yield a loaded post state and that will also pass in our post. Um, if we fail, then we'll get an error and we'll, um, we'll essentially pass through our error in our fail to load post state. And then what we want to do now that we have our block all filled out and it pretty much matches this one almost exactly. It's just working with a block as opposed to a qubit. We just need to go ahead and replace everywhere that we're using qubit. So I think that we had our first one in the main.dart where we're actually working with our block provider. So now instead of qubit, let's change this to block. And then now it knows that we're not supposed to be doing this right here. We're actually supposed to be post qubit or block, I mean. And there's also no get post function in here. But what we want to do is we want to actually add an event to our post block. So we'll do add and then we specify the event and that and we only have one event, which is the load post event. So now we're going to add this to our block. That's going to kick off the map to event um, function, which we had back over here where I can't find it. Oh, right here. So once we add, it's going to trigger this function right here. It's going to see that the event is this post or load post event. And then it's going to kick off this logic in here. So, oh, we got to save that bad boy. So we're all set right here. Everything else can stay the same but we need to go back over to our post view because once again, we're not working with qubits anymore. We're working with a block. Oh yeah. And our block doesn't work with a list of posts anymore. It works with a post state like that. Now we can see that um, our functionality is kind of falling apart right here because well, one, we shouldn't even have posts. We should have a post state, right? Or we could just call it state like that. And what we need to do is we need to update this logic to check if if we're working with any of the different possible states. So let me just go through and, and handle that and then we'll go back and explain it.
All right, so here we go. I made a couple of adjustments, but nothing too crazy has happened, right? So now what you can see is that we're working with specific states and actually makes it a little bit more readable in my opinion. So now we can check, is the state a loading post state? What do we do in the loading post state? Well, we're just gonna show a circular progress indicator. Okay, well, what happens if we're in a loaded post state? What if we got those posts back? Okay, well, then we'll return this list builder, which will have this sexy card in it, and then we'll get the post from our state right here. Simple as that. And we're still going to just simply show that title, right? Easy peasy. What happens if it's a failed to load post state? Well, then we can just put some text in the middle of the screen that's just going to simply show, hey, there, an error occurred and we're gonna show that error. And then since we are checking each of these states in an if statement, then we still need to have um, a else case or else we're gonna end up like with the nasty blue squigglies up here, which I don't like. So if, if for whatever reason we get down here, we'll just return a container or you could throw an exception, whatever you wanna do. But if we run this back, and we take a look at our app, we should actually notice that there's no crazy difference going on right here. So let me just close this up a little wee bit like so. Let's do a refresh and let's see, we get the loading indicator and bam, like that. Okay, now let's kind of trigger an error and we can do that in our data service. And if we go over here and we make like an adjustment, like let's say we hit the wrong endpoint, we misspelled it, we said pause like that and we did a refresh, we can actually see the loading state and then you can see that the error occurred, right? That's the same text that we had before and we can actually see like the list. Now, obviously we would be handling this error much better than this in a real app, but this demonstrates that we actually did hit that different use case and now we're in this state where we're actually in an error case and, and we can have all of that all that UI listed out for us right here in our in our post view, right? So it's like very easy to see what happens under what circumstances, right? And um, if you want it, you could even like go even further with the different amount of uh, events that could happen, right? So let's say that we wanted to, well, let's fix our, let's fix our data class, right? Cause we, we know how to actually spell, so. I want to restart that, but let's say that we want it to be able to pull to refresh. That might be like another event, right? Well, what we could do is let's go over to our post view and we can wrap our block builder in, or not our block builder, but our list view right here. We can wrap our list view in a refresh widget. All right, so now we wrapped our list view in a refresh indicator and we can see that we have our on refresh function right here. So what we can do is we can go back over to our post qubit file, which has our post block in it. We can add in a new event. We could call it pull to refresh. All right, so now we have this pull to refresh event, right? Which we could trigger some different logic in here if we want it. But what's actually easier is for us to just, you know, use the same logic because it's very similar to what we want to do. So if event is load post event or is um, pull to refresh event, then we want to trigger this logic in here. Now, we may not want to actually show this loading post state depending on what we want our functionality to be for the pull to refresh event. So the cool thing is, is that it's gonna give us the ability to really have some fine grain control over what we wanna do, right? If we wanna spit out a different state for this pull to refresh event, right? Like if we were planning on it doing something different, then we can do something other than this loading post state being pushed out in the yield, right? And then it's still gonna go through the same logic as well. So we have two different events which can trigger the same logic or we could code it up to have different logic, which is really cool. So now, so now, if you go back over to our main post view, what we can do is we can mark this as async. And what we wanna do is we want to say that we want to add a new event to our our block, right? So the way that we do that is with a block provider. So we have the block provider back over in our main.dart. So we already are providing a block. We can see it right here. So you see this block provider right here. 
we want to get the same instance of that. We don't want to recreate a new one, right? So we want to get the same instance as that, and we can reference it right here by doing block provider. And then we're going to say of, and we want to specify what block provider we're working with. So in this case, we're working with the post block, like so, the post block. Then we pass in our context, right? Which is going to be this context that's actually being passed in from our block builder. Awesome stuff. And from here, we're going to just say add, just like we did before when we were initializing this view, right? Or when we were initializing the block state back over in our main. So we did add over here. We said we did that sexy cascade, right? And we said load post event. This is not that load post event. What we want to do is we want to do pull to refresh event because it might have different logic, right? It might have a little bit of different logic. So we're just going to have pull to refresh event like that. And now if I go ahead and restart this entire thing, we should be able to see everything works as normal. And if we scroll down, same old, oh, look at that nasty red. That means that we did not put a limit on our on our list view. So let's make sure that we have that. We have our list view, to, view builder right here, but we don't have no item count. Item count like this. So we want to have our posts or we want to have our state dot post dot length like that. We'll save it. Now, if we try to scroll all the way to the bottom, it should stop right there looking real good. All right, we go all the way to the top. We try to do the pull to refresh. It does the quick load real quick and then bam, we have data back right there. So as you can see, this is kind of blowing it kind of way out of proportion. And this is why qubit actually exists. This is why you want to work with functions as opposed to working with block and, and the different states and the different events, because a lot of the time you're going to be working with something simple, right? You don't need to have a whole entire state dedicated to pull to refresh. You don't necessarily need to have three different states to represent these different things. Um, you could just represent that with whether the list is null or whatever, right? We could have just kept it as qubit and that would have been perfectly fine, but this is how you would upgrade to block in the future if you wanted to. You just simply copy your qubits functionality, you turn it into a block, you start working with an event, you start working with the state, and then you know, you're know you pretty much set to go. You just have to go back and refactor your code to work with the events, the states, the blocks, and all that other stuff. So this is an example of how to do it. This is an example of why you might want to use qubit, but it's also an opportunity for you to be comfortable and knowing which one you want to use for the different scenarios. So I hope that you found this video informative. I hope that you like it. If you did, make sure that you give it a thumbs up and make sure you leave me some engagement down in the comments. Help YouTube spread this video and let them know that it's awesome. All right. I need a little bit of help there. All right. So that's going to be it for today. I hope that you enjoyed the video. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe. Now go out there and keep coding passionately.